Continuing with our discussion of the natural numbers, we're going to now consider how we can order them in a very natural way. So far, we've covered a number of topics concerning natural numbers. Uh, just to run through a list of what we've covered. First, we've covered uh, inductive sets. We've also covered piano systems, transitive sets, and also arithmetic on the natural numbers. And today we're going to talk about how we can order the natural numbers. And in fact, our definition of the natural numbers allows us to speak of order uh, very precisely. Uh, that is, we can say things like 2 is less than 3. And just to remind you what our construction of the natural numbers is, we have 0 is the empty set, and then each of the following numbers contains all of the stuff below it. And it's that statement that's going to allow us to talk of order. And you can see that each set, let's take the set 3 for example, contains everything less than that, namely 0, 1, and 2. So if we want to say things like 2 is less than 3, we can really boil this down into a statement like 2 is in the set 3, or 1 is in the set 3. So we now have a very natural motivation to set up this definition for the less than relation. So we're going to say that the symbol less than is a binary relation on omega times omega. And remember that a binary relation is just a subset of some Cartesian product. So we're going to say that the less than relation is all the ordered pairs m and n, such that m and n is in the Cartesian product omega times omega, and that m is a, is a member of the set n. And remember, we can use this same interchangeably with m is less than n. For example, the members of the set less than would be, for example, 2, 3, 4, 10, but not 5, 2. And of course, that's because 2 is less than 3, 4 is less than 10, but 5 is not less than 2. Or equivalently, 2 is a member of the set 3, 4 is in 10, but 5 is not in the set 2. And to give you a visual representation of what's going on here, uh, I've taken a subset of, of omega times omega, just uh, 0, 1, 2 times 0, 1, 2 here. And I've colored in red all the stuff that would be in the less than relation. And you can see what's going on here is if you consider the line y equals x right here along the diagonal, all the stuff above and to the left would be in the less than relation. And hopefully this brings back memories of what you do in like in high school, where you color in inequalities on a graph like this. And just as a reminder, when we say things like 2 is less than 3, we can also interpret this as the order pair 2, 3 is in the less than relation. Just as we might write x, r, y, we can say 2 is less than 3. And again, we can just interchange 2 is less than 3 with 2 is a member of the set 3. Now, this less than relation has some very nice properties. Uh, firstly, it has the transitive property. That is, that if I say that A is less than B and B is less than C, then it follows that A is less than C. And hopefully that's pretty intuitive. Uh, another nice property is called trichotomy. That is, that only one of the following three properties is true, or the following three propositions is true. Either a is less than b, or b is less than a, or a is identical to b. And these properties, um, in terms of the terminology, we say that the less than relation is said to be a strict total order on all of omega. And property one is very easy to prove from this, this less than relation, uh, mostly because it just falls from the transitive properties of the natural numbers. Remember, all natural numbers are transitive sets. So if I say that a is in B, and B is in C, then it just follows very naturally from the transitive nature of the natural numbers that A is in C. And that's basically this statement here. And before I prove that trichotomy holds on the natural numbers, I'm going to prove this theorem that A being in the set B implies that A plus is in B plus, and the converse, that A plus being in the set B plus implies that A is in B. So I'm going to prove the leftward direction first, that A plus is a member of B plus implies that A is in B first. So I have this, this is where I'm starting. So by the definition of B plus, I have that A plus is in B union, the side containing B. And from this, the union, there are two possibilities, either A plus is in the set B, or A plus is equal to B. Now suppose it's that first case, that A plus is in B. Now this statement is always true, A is in A plus. Now from the transitive uh, nature of the natural numbers, A is in A plus, and A plus is in B, therefore A is in B. So that covers the first case. 
Now suppose again that A plus is equal to B. That's that second case there. Now again, I know that this is always true, that A is an A plus. So since A plus is the same as B, A is in B. So that covers that direction. So we're going to prove this direction, the rightward direction, by induction. So I'm going to set up this set. A is going to be all the n's. M and n are natural numbers. And for all m's less than n, it follows that m plus is in n plus. So the first thing they ask is, is 0 in this set? And if you substitute 0 in for n there, this first, uh, the if statement says all m's in 0. Now there are no m's in 0. So this is vacuously true. So indeed, 0 is in the set A. Now we're going to show that if k is an A, then k plus is an A. So I have this right here. M is a member of k plus. I just made that substitution in for n there. So I have m is in k plus. So again, that applies to either m is in k or m is equal to k, just from the definition of a successor, just like I did up here. So let's consider that first case. m is in k. Now, by the inductive hypothesis, m is in k implies that m plus is in k. And again, I always know this is true. k plus is in k plus plus. And since all numbers are transitive sets, m plus is in k plus plus. So that's case one. Now case two, let's say m is equal to k. And again, I know m plus is equal, k, is equal to k plus. That's always true if m is equal to k. And I always know that k plus is, equal to, is in k plus plus. Since m plus and k plus are the same, I just make the substitution right there. And again, I get m plus is in k plus, k plus plus, which is what I'm trying to show. So I've demonstrated that statement, and that completes the proof. And conceptually, there's nothing really strange going on with that theorem. It just says that succession is preserving order. That is, that 1 is less than 2 implies that 2 is less than 3, implies that 3 is less than 4, and the converse is 3 is less than 4 implies that 2 is less than 3, which implies that 1 is less than 2. And additionally, you can prove that no number is less than itself. That is, it's false that 2 is less than 2, it's false that 4 is less than 4, and I leave that as an exercise. So we're ready to demonstrate the trichotomy law for omega, which just says that for all natural numbers, m and n, you pick any two natural numbers, it's always true that m is less than n, or n is less than m, or n is equal to m. And first, we're going to observe that only one of these three or statements can be true at any given time. And that's because, let's suppose this, this first one is the true statement, that m is less than n. Now this one can't be true at the same time, because m is less than n, and n is less than m implies that m is less than m. So we have, an, we have a number being less than itself, which is false. And you can see that m is less than n, and this statement being true, that n is equal to m, we could just make the substitution there, and we'd have that, again, m is less than m. And you can go through the other cases, too, to see why that only one of these three can be true at any given time. Now we're going to prove the trichotomy law by induction. So here's the set that I'm going to consider. I have all the n's. m and n are natural numbers. And here's the statement I want to prove here, the trichotomy law. So this uh, proof is going to take a little bit more work. So first I've got to show that 0 is an a. So I'm going to make that substitution, n equals 0. So we've got to show that either m is in 0, or 0 is in m, or m is equal to 0 for all m's. The problem is here, we're trying to make the statement for all m's. So we're going to have to do, do another induction upon m. And the procedure is going to be exactly the same. First, we're going to make the substitution that m is equal to 0. And then we're going to show that the inductive hypothesis holds. So we're going to substitute m is equal to 0. And of these three possibilities, it's clear that 0 is equal to 0. So when I substitute for 0, this whole statement does hold. So we can substitute m. So now we're going to show something equivalent to an inductive hypothesis. In fact, it is an, an inductive hypothesis. So we've got to show that if we assume that some m satisfies trichotomy, then m plus satisfies trichotomy. So we're trying to show really this inference here, that trichotomy on m implies trichotomy on m plus. 
Now, the way this OR operator works, you can always get rid of the false statements here. Now, for example, this statement here, m is equal to 0, is a false statement. And m being equal to 0 is a false statement when you consider it with this statement. And here we have another false statement that m plus isn't 0 because 0 is the empty set. It doesn't contain anything. So this statement really boils down to 0 is an m, or m is in 0, implies that 0 is an m plus. So this is really the statement that we have to show. So we're going to take two cases here. We have the case that 0 is an m, or m is equal to 0. So let's take the case that 0 is an m. Then we know that 1 is an m plus. That follows from the that other theorem that we showed. So we know 0 is indeed in the set 1. And by transitivity, 0 is an m plus. And hopefully you can see why that is. 0 is in 1. 1 is an m plus. So 0 is an m plus. So we've shown that inference. Now let's take that second case where m is 0. So if m is 0, we know that m plus is 1. And again, since 0 is in 1, m plus is the same as 1. So 0 is an m plus. So in both of those cases, both of those OR statements, the inference holds. So our conclusion is that 0 is in the set A, the thing that we started with. So that was actually the tough part of the proof. So now we're going to show that second step of a proof by induction, that K is an A, implies that K plus is an A. And this is the same set we were considering before. So we're going to suppose that K is an A. So now we have three cases, that M is in K, K is an M, or K is equal to M. So let's take that first case. So let's suppose that M is in K, then M implies that M plus is in K plus. And we always know that M is in M plus. So that implies that M is in K plus. And therefore, K plus is an A, because it satisfies one of the three, one of the three properties here, namely that one. So let's consider the second case that K is a member of M. Now it's true that either K plus is an M or K plus is equal to M. And this I leave for an exercise to show that this inference holds that K is a member of M implies that K plus is an M or K plus is equal to M. And you can see if that inference holds, then it's going to be true that K plus is an A. In case three, let's suppose that K is equal to M. Now we always know that this is true, K is in K plus. And since k is equal to m, I just make the substitution. So m is in k plus, and therefore k plus is in a. And that concludes the proof. So we conclude that trichotomy holds on omega. Finally, I'd like to show another very important property of the set omega. And it's called the well-ordering principle of omega. And it says that not any non-empty subset, let's call it a of omega, has a least element. That is, there is some m such that all the n's, for all the n's in A, m is less than n, or m is equal to n. So there's some m in the set A, such that m is less than all the other stuff in A, or it's equal. So it's, this is why we call it a least element. So the proof uh, for this principle, it's a little bit involved as well. But here's the general argument. Suppose we have some subset of omega without a least element. And I'm going to call that set A. So we're going to show that A is going to be equal to the empty set. And what we're going to do is we're going to force A to be the empty set by showing that the following set is equal to omega. And this set is going to be B. This is going to be all the natural numbers N, such that no number less than N belongs to A. And this is the core of the argument here. So if I can show that B is equal to all omega, that means A is the empty set. And this is because, for example, if I show that, that the number 20 is in the set B, that means that numbers like 17, 16, 4, 5 are not in the set A. And if I can show that B is all of omega, A can't have anything in it. And this is going to essentially demonstrate the well-ordering principle. Once you've wrapped your head around that claim right there, 
that showing that b is equal to omega implies that a is the empty set, meaning that the only subset of omega without a least element, in fact it has no elements, is, is the empty set. So we're going to now show that b is inductive. And first we're going to ask, is 0 in B? And it's vacuously true that 0 is in B. Because if you substitute n equals 0 there, no number less than 0 belongs to A. Yeah, that, that's vacuously true. The no number less than 0, there are no numbers less than 0. So 0 is in the set B. Now we're going to show the inductive inference that K is in B implies that K plus is in B. Now let's consider some n less than K plus. Now there are two possibilities for that n right there. n is less than k, or n is equal to k. Now let's take that first case, n is less than k. In the case where n is less than k, n can't be in the set A. And that's because k is assumed to be in B. That's the inductive hypothesis there. Remember that if k is in B, no number less than n belongs to A. So all those n's in the first case are not in the set A. Now let's take that case where n is equal to k. Now n is either in a or it's not in a. Now if it's in a, it would serve as a least element. And that's another important statement to wrap your head around in this proof, that if n were in a, it would now be a least element. Because we've ruled out the case that n is less than k. So for any other comparison between natural numbers, it's either true that n is equal to k, or n is greater than k. So k is now going to serve as the least element if n is in a. So what we've shown by examining all this stuff, all the n's less than k plus, is that everything below k plus can't be in a. So that demonstrates that k plus is a member of the set b, because we've shown that no number less than k plus belongs to a. So k plus is in B. And that shows that B is equal to omega. And that shows that A is equal to the empty set, which demonstrates the well-ordering principle, that any non-empty subset of omega has a least element. And that'll conclude this video. Here are the practice problems for this session. And stay tuned for the next video, where we construct the integers. Thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe. And stay tuned for more videos. Thanks.